Hey guys, don't you worry, I am not starting a pet funeral business here. These are indeed two clavichords. This one is the domage that you know through the channel. In case you haven't watched the video I made specifically about it, I link it up here. This is a clavichord by John Morley. This is a gift from a friend. Uh, during uh, most of 2019, uh, I was spending a lot of time between here and London and that situation was uh, potentially going to carry on for a while. So this friend of mine who uh, mainly plays the Baroque flute had this clavichord and told me if I wanted to, well, as far as I had understood, borrow it. Uh, to have an instrument to practice while I was in London because this clavichord was already here and so was my piano. So I go to pick it up and uh, basically my friend tells me that he is giving it to me. So, uh, so I took it and of course then Covid arrived and then I, I didn't... I stopped the situation of moving between two cities and the clavichord stayed in this place in London. So when I got it, it hadn't been properly played very much and uh, it hadn't been tuned for a long period of time, which I don't know what it is, but it could have been decades. So I gave it a little tuning then. And then of course it stayed for about one year, until very recently, uh, untuned. But I have quickly uh, put it back into, let's call it playing condition. Uh, but yeah, it's probably not very well in place. Uh, it, it needs, like this one did when I got it, because it hadn't been played for, uh, for a while. I needed to tune it several times until it started to, to stay in place. Uh, but anyway, so... Let's look at these two clavichords. They are a very similar size, but you can already see the different appearance of them. The domet has a much more elaborated, a much more uh, decorated, uh, if you want, case with all this vineyard wood, and this is much more simple. Don't look at the heights because the Morley stand is a little bit higher. So let's open them. Uh, before we open, uh, I'll just tell you about the sizes. Yeah, so th they are similar size. The domage is, looks, looks much slimmer actually, but it, it just has basically, it's just a couple of centimeters longer. So if we open it, you won't probably see a lot here, but I will bring up a different view with some pictures here. So let's have a look at these pictures. So in this first picture you can see the, an overall view from the top of uh, both clavichords. You can see that they have slightly different lines and proportions and the, the, you can see that the sizes of the keys and the proportion between uh, black and white keys are different. And uh, you also will notice the position of the tuning pins, which is different in the two clavichords. In this other picture we see uh, a little bit of a closer view of the area of the soundboard. And so you can see the different shape of the bridge and uh, more closely the different position of the tuning pins. Here in this that we could call uh, a front view, you can see the difference in the keys from this angle. You can see that the Morley has much taller keys than the, the dome match. And uh, of course uh, you can see again that the white keys in the Morley are thinner compared to the, or let's say not as wide compared to the ones uh, of the dome match and you see also the proportion and the different type of decoration which actually is very similar it's just that the Morley has these two colors the black of the top of the key and then the, the wood detail whereas the domet uh, is just uh, black there and here you just have a look at the tangents 
and you can see the, the completely different type of tangents in the Morley you have these rather short uh, tangents that are actually very solidly put into the the keys and uh, the distance between the top of the tangent and the strings is very small in the do match you see instead that the tangents are taller and also the distance between the string and the tangent is uh, bigger this difference in the tangents it's very significant uh, in my opinion because the reduced amount of distance here uh, reduces the amount of sound that the instrument produces in the case of the Morley and reduces also the dynamic range that one can produce with the playing the contrary happens on the do match where, which has more dynamic range of uh, volume and also has more volume overall so it's uh, one, re it, one needs more control to play on the do match I would say it's a bit more difficult to play on the damage, but one can get better results uh, out of the music. Whereas with the Morley, it's probably easier to handle, but there is not much sound, at least not compar compared to the damage, and there, is, there are less possibilities. It is likely easier to obtain on the Morley the effect of Bebung, you know, when you press the key a bit uh, harder and you have this vibrato effect I can try to do it here you may not hear very well if not at all because of the position of the microphone let's see you can have a very e extreme let's try again it's a uh, extreme bebung effect and that is a bit more difficult to do here but to be honest I don't feel the need uh, in this instrument there is a lot of expression without this effect on this instrument here so here we have uh, two instruments um, that could be called revival instruments a revival early keyboards very very different and they were actually this one is older this one was built in 1971 and 1970 around that that those years there this is at least 10 years older but they are from the the, the same period you would probably like to know which clavichord i prefer i mean this is my opinion i think the domage offers uh, many more musical possibilities yeah so i certainly if i had to play if i had the two and i say okay which one would you like to play i would go for the domains as i said it requires more control but with practice everything is possible this clavichord nevertheless has its function i have a uh, done a quick tuning of it uh, and I tune it to mean tone temperament so a temperament very good uh, tuning temperament that's very good for renaissance music and yes I'll, I'll, I plan to keep it uh, like that whereas this one is tuned in a so-called circular temperament where potentially you can play in all the keys is not true with the mean tone, quarter comma mean tone uh, temperament where there are certain keys where things don't really work but that's it so uh, to each instrument it, its function now I will uh, play a little bit a few notes on both I'll need to, to change the position of the microphone because the sound boards are in opposite uh, places here don't base uh, uh, too much you know your opinion of the sounds it's just to have a, a a rough sense of the difference in volume and quality of tone this one you know already or, or if you don't you can look in the channel 
I just wanted to play the same few notes in both. Bear in mind, guys, this needs uh, the do match needs a little bit of adjustment in the tuning, which I uh, have not had time to do before this video. And the Morley hadn't been tuned for a year. I did a quick, quick tune. Uh, so and is already gone a bit off anyway so it's not uh, very well in place but you know the, the purpose is just for you to have a rough sense of how things sound oh yeah I forgot to say that uh, this one the A A1 is at uh, 440 for 40 Hertz this one it is at 415 